just a second. Perfect. So as I said today, we have the pleasure to have Yanni Sani Yusuf. I hope I spelled it right. Yes. More or less, okay. Which will talk about uh, Ionic. And he is an international speaker. He's present on many, many conferences and obviously a very expert in Ionic. So it's your your word, your talk, Sunny. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, so good evening. I'm going to switch to my slides now. So if you don't see my face, it's it's, it's perfectly okay. I'm alive. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Uh, so um, let me just give me one minute. Screen share. All right, can everybody see themselves? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go in presentation mode. I'm gonna start presenting. I'm going to hide my history and everything so just in case. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So good evening, everybody. How are you? Um, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for the Yuri for actually uh, making it, this happen. Jury, is it Jury or Yuri? Sorry? Is it Jury or Yuri? Yuri. Great, you see? So I knew what I was saying. As, exactly. So uh, the title of my talk today is Progressively Mobile with Ionic. And I'm going to show you how you can create multiple applications with Ionic with, um, uh, on a, and also make a pro progressive web, a web app. So good evening. Um, my name is Sani Youssef. I'm, I run a company in London called Hybrid. Uh, I'm also the co-organizer of Ionic UK. Uh, and I'm an author trainer. I like to travel like Yuri told you. And I recently traveled the world. I did 14 cities in eight months, but I did not come to Italy, unfortunately. So, which is a bummer. But hopefully soon you'll see me, I, I promise. Uh, has anybody seen the movie Avatar? Yes. 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 Uh, Yuri, how many people roughly have seen the movie Avatar, if you can count hands? <laughs> like 80%, if not 90%. <laughs> oh, great people. You see, I, I love you people. You people are smart. So that is the best movie of all time. If you don't, if you want to be my friend, just go and watch Avatar. Like, literally. If, if I meet my wife and she hasn't watched Avatar, it, I'm, 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 that's it. It's not going to work. You know? <laughs> Exactly. So you can find me online everywhere at Sani Yusuf, S-A-N-I-Y-U-S-U-F. Uh, I write on Medium. I have a blog that I don't like to update very often. And uh, I, Twitter is fine for me as well, and I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, just before we proceed, everybody can hear me clearly, can see the slides perfectly, yes? Yes. yes. All right, perfectly. Um, so why am I here today? Why is this guy all the way from England here? telling you about, you know, whatever he's what going to tell you. Summer, I want to tell you about how you can use Ionic to create, um, first of all, an iOS app, uh, and an Android app, basically an iOS and Android app that you can actually install from the App Store. The same thing from Windows Phone. I know, yes, Windows Phone is kind of dead. If you still have a Windows Phone, you, yeah, you need a Christmas gift. You really need a Christmas gift. <laughs> yes, uh, but it's okay. And also, with everything about progressive web applications coming along, uh, I'll also show you how to create a web, progressive web application. Uh, and Maxim is actually going to be talking about progressive web apps later. So I'll leave most of the, what is this? And can you please explain this to him? He's much better at that. <laughs> and his talk is geared towards that. But my talk is targeted with creating all these applications with only one code. I will show you four different apps, but you're going to only use one code where you don't make any change and you will get four applications. Okay. So at this point, some of you don't believe me and you are like, you know, why is, who is this guy and everything. So if you just bear with me for a second, I will, you know, just come with me. Let me show you the way. Um, so has anybody used Ionic in the crowd? Roughly how many people? Five percent, ten percent. Okay. How many people have heard of Ionic, roughly? Sixty percent. Mm. Good. So um, Ionic is 
an open source SDK that lets web developers build mobile applications. You will Google what Ionic is, and you will hear six million and six million different definitions. But don't believe them. Just believe me. Only me. You know, <laughs> because don't don't listen to anybody else. Okay. So what is Ionic? It's really just web. Uh, so if you've created native applications before in the past, right? Let uh, Android, for example, Android uses Java to create mobile applications, and you use the Android SDK, which is the one of the most painful SDKs in the world, you know. Um, and for iOS, you use the iOS SDK with the most beautiful language in the world, which is called Objective C. You know, yeah. if you've written Objective C, you know how beautiful it is. <laughs> and if you want to create the same application for a Windows phone, you use um, what's it called? You use .NET, which is basically C sharp. Um, but the problem is, for every time you need to create an application, you need to use like a uh, you need to create hire somebody different to create every um, an app for you. So let's say you want to you're Mark Zuckerberg, you've just uh, gotten one one billion dollars in funding, and you want to create your application. Now you have to hire one team for iOS, one team for Android, one team for uh, Windows Phone, and another team for web. And let me tell you something, these guys, none of them, they don't like each other. They don't like each other, you know? And if a bus hits one guy from the other team, the one guy cannot, um, from the iOS team, uh, you can't just go and replace him from the Android team. But if you, you created web applications, you know that this is not the case, you know? You create one code with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and if you have Safari, you see the same thing. If you have Chrome, you see the same thing. If you have Opera, if you see the same thing. If you have Edge, you see the same thing. If you have Internet Explorer, sometimes you see the same thing. <laughs> you know, but most of the times you do. You know, uh, so how about if we could create mobile applications with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we don't have to create a new code? We can just use the same code we use for our web application and to create mobile applications. Isn't that awesome? Right? Exactly. So yeah. Angular, um, um, Ionic is the framework that brings that. And Ionic is built up on top of Angular. Uh, and I would explain that a bit. I think this is very, this is like a very super nice Iron Man looking. And come on, guys. I think this deserves a round of applause. Let's, let's give this a round of applause. Just this. <laughs> come on, guys. Yeah. By the way, I didn't design it. Somebody else did. <laughs> so it's built on top of Angular. And I would explain in the next few slides how it all comes together. Um, so let me show you how it all fits together. Um, the, your, you, when you use Ionic, uh, if, you, if you've used native applications before, right? Um, native applications are great, they're great because they allow you to access the camera, you know, the Bluetooth, you know, the Compass, uh, lo local database, you know, accelerometer, things like this. But on the web, and also when you're creating native applications, you already have like building blocks. You have a button, you have a, a layout, you have like a, a stack, you have um, so many things. Like a, it's like you're trying to build a house, but somebody is already giving you a window, a couch, uh, a door and a bed and everything. All you just need to do is just furnish your house, right? But imagine if the person then gives you like sand and cement and like, um, you know, water, say, okay, you want to build a house, you have to build everything from scratch. You know, this, this will be pretty, by the time you finish building your house, I probably would have died and my, maybe my grandson too would have died because <laughs> you cannot do it, it's too, it takes too long. But the web is like this. In the web, if you're creating web applications today, all you have is div and span and maybe table, if you still use table, you know, um, to do all these things. But we don't have components. This is why we have things like Bootstrap, you know, Angular Material Design to help us, like, create components in the web. So how does it fit in, in, in all together? The, the thing with Ionic is on the web, if you try to access today, like, a, a camera or a Bluetooth from the web, it's very difficult. You know, five years ago, if you wanted to play a game online, first thing you have to do is 
download Adobe Flash. Who remembers Flash? <laughs> yeah. And then you had to download Shockwave. And then you had to make sure you had to update the latest version of Shockwave and then the latest version of Flash. And then five hours later, before you played the game, your browser crashed. You know? It was a great. If you want to take a simple picture, you have to use Flash. And nobody likes Flash anymore. So the difference between a web app and a mobile app is that in a mobile app, you can play Angry Birds, you can use your Facebook, you can use your camera, you know, you can do NFC. But on the web, you can't really do this because it's changing now, but you still can't fully, you know, to take a picture on the web today is still very, very difficult. So uh, this is where there's a technology called Cordova or PhoneGap that allows your mobile HTML code to talk to your device. And let me, let me show you how this all fits. So you write your app code with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you know, and then you use Ionic to write, uh, write this, you know, uh, Ionic gives you a lot of building blocks, you know, and then Ionic is built on top of Angular, so you can use any of the Angular features, and everything is living within a web view. So your application that you create is actually a native application. But when you start, what happens is it launches a web view. A web view is like a, it's the way it's the component that allows you to show web code on uh, a native app. So today, if you use like your Facebook application or your Twitter application, what happens is that you actually, um, when you click a link, for example, on Twitter or Facebook, it doesn't take you to Safari or Chrome. You know, a new window comes up within your Facebook and Twitter application and shows you the website. That is a web view, basically. And Cordova, this green thing here, is the magic that allows you to use, use JavaScript to communicate with your phone's camera, Bluetooth, GPS, and all these things. So now you can communicate with your phone's device. You know, you can, you can do everything that a normal mobile application can actually do. And so let's see some of the features of Ionic. Right, I've been talking and talking and talking, but let me show you some stuff. So Ionic uses what we call native-esque components. Uh, if you look at this code here, it's like, hey, Ionic code is HTML. You've never seen it, but it kind of gives you an example of what is going on here. You can see a header. You can see a title. You know that, hey, this is a title, and this is the content area. This is where the content is. and what they do is Ionic, they look at the native code, you know, they, they stalk this native code, they dig deep into it, and they look at how it behaves, right? And, and they use that, they then, they then take HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and implement that feature for you so that you don't have to do that. So you have so many things, all the components are very performant, and they use, like I said, the model of SDKs. They also have like an icon library called Ionicons that have that has more than uh, 1,000 icons out there that you can choose and do whatever you want to do. Uh, it's very semantic and extensible, uh, uh, extensible as well. So if you want to add like your own CSS or you want maybe the title to change a different color, it's very easy to do this with Ionic. Uh, another thing they have is they have a very good um, like navigation system. How many Angular developers do we have in the house? Roughly how many? Okay. So if you've worked with Angular, you know that it took 5,000 years for the Angular router, for Angular 2 to come out, you know? And, and if, if you've never really worked with Angular, it's very simple. But actually, Ionic router is even simpler because you, what you need to understand is when you're navigating in, um, in the, on the web, you know, it's everything is URL based. www. You know, I love Sunny. com slash make sure Sunny marries my daughter. You know, very nice URL. Uh, but on mobile, we don't have these URLs. We have just you know pages. You click on your profile page. It takes you. You don't see any URL. Exactly. So Ionic mimics this. The navigation is not tied to the URL. It gives you very simple code for you to actually just. Um, navigate. You just need to know the page you want to navigate to, and then you can just call a simple function to actually navigate to this page. Another thing is it supports deep linking. So, for example, you want to deep link your application to, like, maybe you want to share some picture to Instagram from your application. 
you can deep link and you also somebody can like maybe you have like an Amazon application that you built at Ionic and somebody's on the web, they click a link and they wanted to open that product on your phone, that will happen. Another thing is it has a very, very good CLI. Um, you know, there are a lot of things today. If you want to like use the CLI, there's so many things going you hear about Webpack, um, roll up i don't really know about these things literally i'll be very honest with you <laughs> and i frankly i don't ever want to worry about them and this is why i love ionic the cli because it just handles everything for you you don't have to use um uh, compile your own sas and because ionic uses typescript which is like a a super set of javascript so think of typescript as like a it's a super set it's, it's like javascript that is going to be we're going to be using in the future but today it's not available in the browser so it allows you to write that TypeScript, and it then compiles it down to JavaScript for you, and then transpile, um, transpiles it down to ES5. Uh, so things like error reporting, how do you build your app, everything's handled for you with Ionic. You don't have to set that up. Um, it has a very great community. Uh, I know there's certainly an Ionic Italy uh, group. Uh, we have more than almost 30,000 stars on GitHub. There's a Slack channel. I'll pass on the link. So we have almost 11,000 people on Slack any day, any time. Some of them don't sleep. They don't eat. You know, they're there to answer every question you have. And you can start. To, and there's a forum as well. You can, um, if you have any errors, uh, on GitHub. And also, you can start a community in your own city or place. Uh, it's also very configurable. You know, so. If you want to, like, let's say you are creating an app with Ionic, and you want, you know, your 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 company has like different colors. Let's say you work for, you know, Donald Trump, and you want to use maybe you want to make your every head in your app say "Make America Great Again." You know, you can do this with Ionic. Uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea for you to work with Donald Trump right now, but yes, <laughs> it's all good. But you can like literally do anything you want to do. You can configure the application. You can customize it. To use your own colors and, and all the components of Ionic, you can actually like um, customize them, configure them to, to, to look and act differently. Because what you need to understand with Ionic is, for example, you write the same code, right? But when the app is on iOS, it will just look like an iOS application. It's just going to look like iOS. It's not going to. Um, um, do anything funny, you know, uh, like it's not going to look like Android for you. And uh, the same code, when it changes to Android, it's going to use material design, uh, all the language, everything is going to change, things like that. And when it's on um, Windows Phone as well, it's just going to use different icons, everything. And we'll see that when we start to do the demo. Also, multi language support. Considering you, most majority of you speak Italian, uh, if I come here and I tell you that, oh, Ionic only supports English, somebody's probably going to shoot me. <laughs> so it's got, it's very great. It plays well with different languages, you know, and also has like right to left support. So for example, I was in Israel in November and we were, I was able to showcase how Ionic uses right to left because, you know, they you write in Hebrew uh, and they write from right to left. And do you forget that there are more than... 100 200 million people in the world that actually write from right to left so we write from left to right we think that's what everybody does but that's not the truth uh, and so it's really 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 simple to use multi-language support uh, so now let's talk about progressive web applications so i'm just going to talk briefly about progressive web apps because maxim has so much he's going to tell you about this but what is a progressive web app it's literally a mobile application that allows you to run offline first you know, so today, if you go on like uh, Facebook on your mobile phone, you that's it. You know, you need that browser every time to go there if you don't have the Facebook app. But what if you could save that Facebook application that you go on on your web, um, on, on your on Chrome browser on your phone, and it could launch, it will work offline, it will launch like a native application, it could use everything that the native app has, all those things. And anytime Facebook makes an update, you don't have to wait. You know, especially if you're using Apple, you don't have to wait 5,000 years to get that update. You'll just get it as soon as possible, which is really cool. And it also works in full screen. It will have like an app icon like every other app, and you don't need an app store. 
right now it's Chrome only, but we are hoping that Safari support this. So Maxim later is going to tell you a full details about progressive web applications. Yeah. And this is made possible by something called a service worker, um, which Maxim is actually going to tell you about later on. But service, just think of a service worker as like a something that intercepts network requests and allows you to like save network requests and cache network requests later on. Uh, so I'm going to show you an app that I created called Netflix and Chill. You know, don't get too excited. You know, uh, it's a very innocent app. And this app, I created it. I was bored in Christmas. Um, and I was very bored. So I met this guy on Twitter called Ephosa. And he made this great Netflix designs. So I messaged him on Twitter. I said, hey, can I use Ionic for this? Can I use your designs to like bring it to life? And he said, okay. So I spent two days and I brought the designs to life. And they uh, look absolutely beautiful. And so I created an app out of it um, to show. So this app is available on GitHub on this link here. And you can also access this live, this app live right now on bit.do slash nflix. You should be able to access it on your phone right now. So that's bit.do.nflix. So anyways, let's go to the demo time. Ooh, it is time for demo. Does anybody watch Vikings here? <laughs> Any number? No one, no one. Oh, boo. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm just going to pop off from, let me just uh, pop off here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come out here. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to show you quickly how easy it is to create an Ionic application from scratch, right? So if I say CD desktop and I say, Ionic, start, uh, let's say, what should we name our applications? Any, 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 anybody from the audience? <laughs> Enemies? Enemies? No, craft your own, which is our motto, our, our hashtag, basically. Craft. Tyrone. Sorry, I can't hear that. Can somebody spell that for me? <laughs> T-Y? Yes. R-O-L. OK. T-Y-R-O-L. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, is this, is this, can everybody see this? Yeah. Better. It's better? OK. So you can start an Ionic app like this, because I already have the Ionic CLI installed on my application. So, and you can also use like a template, a different like a template. You can use a blank template. You can use like a side menu template. You can use like a Google Maps template, you know. But let me just use tabs because I like tabs. And also because today you have two versions of Ionic, version one and version two. Version one of Ionic uses Angular one, which is the older Ionic, but it's still being supported. While version two is the baby, the new baby that everybody should be using. Every time you use Ionic, one to start a new application, a puppy dies somewhere. So don't use Ionic one anymore to start a new application. <laughs> Only to for maintenance. <laughs> so you have to put the V2 parameter. And if I just click enter, it's just going to go and basically start me a new application. Uh, and it will install the NPM package, which would take maybe 300,000 years, hopefully. <laughs> but I have a fast internet connection, so this should um, be done really, really quickly. Uh, also, what I can do at the meantime while this is running is I can actually just open this application to actually show you the uh, exactly so this window. Ooh, okay, we have an error with this. It's saying let me just change a different port. <coughs> hmm. Oh, okay. 
let's try this. Let's just see if our, yes, OK. So we're just going to go in here, cd Tyrell. Um, what did we name our app again? Craft. Craft, oh, yes. Exactly. So I'm just going to run this little command, and let's see. Exactly. So I'm just going to run this little command, and just that one command, you're going to see a lot of magic. I was kind of relieved there because it wasn't working on the other app. I was like, whew. This is working now. <laughs> and you're going to see magic happen. So I can just do this. And this is running in the browser, by the way. So this is Chrome running here. And I can just show you. So you guys saw me. I did not cheat. I have not written any code. Have I written any code? <clears throat> no, I haven't written any code. Exactly. but. You can see that we already have three applications running, iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, three instances of our app. And we can see how we can play with these applications uh, as we wish. You can see, can you see any differences between these three applications? Anybody? Yes. 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 OK, I'm giving out 50 euros for anybody that tells me the most differences. <laughs> Any different? <laughs> Any well, different? The style difference is mainly. Okay. The header. Yeah. You see iOS is center, Android here. The text, the font, the icons. And everything. And this is what you get with Ionic. This is the same code running. It's the 100% the same code that is running. But what happens is the fact that this particular, um, uh, what's it called? It knows that this is Android. This is how Android should look. It should use this icon. It should use this text size. It should use Roboto font. On iOS, it knows to, to look like this. Even if you look at like, the transitions, they're all different. And let's actually see that. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to open my Netflix application. And I think I know what's wrong. My node modules folder is actually messed up. So I need to just delete this node modules folder. And I just do npm install. And while we're doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have a look at this application that we've just created. So we've just created this app called Craft Hyro. So I'm just going to go to Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to do this. Is this big enough? Yes. yes. Good. OK. So let's look at the code for Ionic. This is literally the code we've just generated. And you have so many things, you know, your known modules. But we're just going to focus on the source folder here. And this is the main thing. It's, and we look at, we see an index.html file, you know, pretty standard file that like we, we, we see all the time. Um, it, if you look at it, it's saying it's using the build folder. We can just, if you've, you've played around with Angular, this is, should be pretty familiar with you. So we're not going to go too deep into that. We're just going to go to the pages. The first page we see is actually the home page. And if we look back here, you know, welcome to Ionic. Welcome to Ionic, right? So we can actually change this. We can say, hey, what should we write? Okay. He is a legend. <laughs> or is he not a legend? Or maybe, I don't know. I think Sunny is the legend. <laughs> yeah, this looks much better. This looks right. <laughs> so if we just go back and we just wait for this to rebuild, right? Can you see that it's automatically changed? Yes. Exactly. And I, so when you're using the Ionic CLI, everything is automatically being watched, is being changed, and everything. So you don't have to worry about anything and also you can do so many things you can add like um there are so many components so one thing we're going to do now is let me just try launching this um ionic lab <clears throat> okay so my demo application doesn't want to work i'll just try another demo application which is um uh, this one and hopefully this one actually works.
So it seems like all my old applications, because I, I didn't upgrade today, don't want to actually work. <laughs> and I don't know why. So let's say, ah, yes. So let, let's just try this one more time. Let's say, let's delete this and do another clean NPM install. So while this is running, what we're going to go to is we're going to go to the Ionic documentation page, right? And if you go to the Ionic documentation page, so if you go to the docs here, I want to show you some of the components that are available in Ionic. Uh, so let's just wait for this to load. Um, can everybody see this? <laughs> exactly. So if you go to documentation space, you see all the components are available. You can see like an action sheet. Is this very familiar? Uh, you can also toggle to like Android and see the same code in Android. And you can go to Windows Phone and see the exact same code. And there are so many other ones. You have things like um, you no know, buttons as well. You can see how it looks different on Windows Phone. On I Android, it looks material design. If you click it, it flickers. And on iOS, it's different as well. You can, you have so many things. You have like uh, some of my favorite ones, like even models. You can do something like this, like that, and this. So these are some of the things that you can decide to do, like with, with Ionic. And also, it's so easy for you to actually, apart from just changing this code, you can do something like um. Like navigation or something like that. So actually, you know what? When you look at your code here, this is the HTML for each page. Each page has also also a SAS. You know, this is where you write your SAS uh, or uh, SCSS for CSS, and you also have like a TypeScript class that you use for you know binding properties. So we can say uh, uh, public, and we can say uh, legend equals you know. Sunny and let's say public legend not original legend equals you know uh, we, can, we can we could go ahead and just do something like copy this and say um, and we can do something like And here we can do this. And if we go back to our, our view here, which is, and watch this refresh. Let's just wait for it. Uh, it my computer is doing some NPM install, so everything is a bit slow right now. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just refresh this. There we go. And we can see that. So this is how you can take advantage of Angular um, and Ionic to do so many things. And uh, you can decide to do things like, you know, give it a color. These are all built in into Ionic. And you can say, you know, danger. Exactly. So these are some of like the built-in colors. If we actually go to the um, Let's say the. Let's go to the theme. Uh, we see the variables of CSS. So if you look at the danger, danger is specified here. You don't have to understand SAS, but danger is specified. Here. What, what if I want maybe I want to customize my app? Let danger be, you know, let's say anybody got any colors they know or they want to use? <laughs> any favorite colors? Anybody? Yellow. Okay. Yellow. Yellow. Do you have the hash? Uh, the hex code? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Google is your friend. <laughs> Yay! Let's see. F F F F zero zero. Okay. F F F F zero zero. Let's see. Woo! So let's go back to our. Thank you, Google. There we go. You see that? 
So this is how easy you could just remove. What even if we decide that we don't want to, you know, we don't want uh, danger anymore in our app. Let's just wait and see. It's just going to go back to the default. So it's not going to break your application. These are some of the things that you can do. I only the other powerful stuff that you can do. Let me just go back and try one more time to see why this might not be working for us. Hey, it's working. <clears throat> My computer started. To oh, okay. This is the best. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me open the right application. I'm so sorry, guys. I have too many applications with Ionic. Like, I don't even know where, what is where now. Uh, so let's play the test stuff. Uh, wow, let's time for somebody to email me right now. Uh, so let's just so try let's to do it from scratch. Uh, okay, so we need to do the same thing here. Uh, I kind of messed around with my node modules earlier today, and I think that has kind of affected. Uh, so I just want to show you the Ionic Lab. Um, sorry, npm install. But before that actually runs, what we can do is we can open up another window here, and we can say Ionic run uh, emulate iOS. Oh, of course, I've removed this from my application. So the next thing we're going to do is we let's just go to bit.do slash nflix and see the live version of the app running. So let's do it. Hey, who likes this application? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so this this is this is the app, and you do something like this, and you know uh, you can like see like a preview of the app. You can share it with your friends. You can add it to your list. You can see a lot of movies. Yes, Viking. This is a great movie. Um, and you can see Suicide Squad, the worst movie of all time. You know. Uh, <laughs> Exactly, and you could let's say we want to change our translation. Let's say I have Danish support, for example, here. I want to change. So what I want you to do is watch this. If I click this, do you see what happened? This has changed to trend to new. This is now in Danish. If I go back to English, so this is just showing the multilingual support for this particular uh, what's it called uh, application. So let's actually mimic something. Do you see what I just did? What I've just done is I've gone offline, right, in this particular tab. Because what I normally would do is disable my Wi-Fi, but if I disable my Wi-Fi, then the phone call will actually go away. So Chrome has this great thing where I've gone offline, but I'm refreshing this application. I'm, I can still use this app. Can you see that? Yes, yeah. This is a web application running offline. And we can still go, and we can still see all our things that we've gone to. We went here as well. We can see this loaded. You can still see the, see the network is sending requests here. If you look on the right-hand side, if I go, you can still see that requests are still being sent. The same thing for here as well. You saw that that request got sent, right? So what is happening? Where is this getting all this data from? So this is what, progress, what a progressive web app is. I've been able to cache that data before this happened. And now, if there's no good connection, good internet, or I'm in the train somewhere, I can still use my application. And I think this is really powerful because instead of using, you know, the dinosaur guy, everybody knows the dinosaur guy, right? Yes. Yeah, you don't want to play that game. And so that's, what, that's what's really, really, really cool about this whole process. And if we actually... Take a look at the code. So Maxim is going to tell you about the service worker, but this is made possible with a service worker, which allows you to catch different events. 
and then the manifesto JSON file. And what I also want you to do there, if you actually have an app running live on your, what's it called, on the on your device, you can actually go ahead and download that app and save it on your on your Android phone. You should be able to see that. So let's actually test something here. <coughs> So what I want to do is I want to try to run this app natively on an iPhone for you to see that is the same application still that I've been able to like get all these different applications running. So let's just wait for this to run on a, on an on an uh, an iOS emulator. So it's just going to deploy. So if you actually look, there's an iOS emulator. So we're just going to go away because this is going to take quite some time. And we're just going to go back. So let's let's try and. Run this here. And OK, so while. While all this is running, we're just going to go back to the actual slides itself. Uh, so this is literally what I wanted to show you about how this app actually works offline and everything is working. And I think it's a beautiful application. By the way, if you like designs, you should follow my friend Esfosa, and he'll tell you all about how he made this design. So I thought that was awesome because what we were able to see was an app actually run offline without a like internet connection and this is great because now you can have four applications running with the same code um, so you can do more advanced things with progressive web applications you can do things like background sync push notifications uh, you can use things like bluetooth nfc and like get user media which is a new standard that google is pushing so some other things i want you to be aware of with the ionic ecosystem is the ionic cloud the Ionic Cloud is like the premium tools that Ionic gives you. You know, you can have things like push notifications, you know, authentication, analytics, deploy, and package. So I Ionic Deploy is an interesting one as well. It allows you to update your app without going through the App Store. If you've tried to update your app from the App Store, you know that it depends on how drunk the guy that works at Apple is that your app gets, you know, so um, that's one great thing. So now you can just update your application without going through the App Store. And there's another thing called Ionic DB, which is like Ionic Firebase, coming out pretty soon. Uh, there's also the Ionic View application. This allows you to test your app without actually going through the App Store. So if you actually download this Ionic View app on your phone, you should be able to actually test my Netflix app because on the GitHub page, I have the ID of the app, and you should be able to see it on your app without you know, doing any certificate issue or so, anything like that. Uh, so now you have seen how we were able to build four mobile app solutions with 100% code. It was very, it's very cost effective and time conscious. You don't have to focus on why things work. And also it's web. So web is good for everybody. Uh, you can join Ionic Denmark. Sorry, I should have changed this to Ionic uh, Italy. Uh, but there is an Ion Italy, uh, uh, Italy, so I, I will make sure to post the link. And as you can also join the Slack channel. You can find me online anytime, ask me any questions. 2 o'clock, 3 a.m. in the morning, I'll answer you. Don't know. Don't send me a message at 3 a.m. actually. <laughs> but I'm joking. That should be fine. You can join the Slack channel here. You can look at Josh Moroni. He talks about Ionic a lot online. He's really cool. And now I'll welcome any questions. Just before we actually welcome any questions, let's just go back and see our app so hey so this is a real ios phone here running a native application and everybody can see the app running right yes exactly so you can see the app should still do the same things you know run uh here right here of course this app is not actually built for small screens but yes so this is what you can you can actually do you can actually have this app running live and i think this is really really powerful so i'm just going to close this because it's going to probably crash my computer uh, and now i'll welcome any questions thank you very much for having me and i'll welcome any questions
So yeah, thank you, Sunny. So question to the audience. Silence. <laughs> there is no stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that you don't ask. <laughs> Are there okay. any curiosities or you can you can post the questions also in German and that would translate, so no problem. Or else in Italian. Yeah, one question was what about debugging? So what about debugging in an emulator and also on a physical phone? Is there a way to, to make that an, as an easy process or tools? Um, yes, so there is a way for you to debug. Of, uh, so when it, when it comes to debugging, half the time, because you're writing HTML code, this is your debugging. Let me just show you. Um, where is the browser? Yeah, here we are. I was looking for the browser from the browser. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your debugging. Literally, the same way you debug your web application, you can set breakpoints and everything. Uh, it's really good. And if you use a your IDE like um, Visual Studio Code or WebStorm, they even have like debugging from like internal debugging. So you can like come here and set like you know some breakpoints here or there, like right here in the code. You can set your own breakpoints, and that would debug in the browser. So, but also there's you you might not be able to. There's sometimes you need to debug with like Xcode, there's some things, but half the time you're just using the browser because you're writing HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So you're just going to debug your app there with, I, I prefer to use Chrome because Chrome is really great for dev tools. You're just going to use your web web dev tools here. It's the same, it's just a web application running. I hope that answers that question. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Yes, another question. Can we expect more desktop support like SpeedPane in the future? Yes, so actually, I uh, that has just you know what? Let me actually out literally. Let me just do this. It's very very dangerous for me to show you my email, but I'll show you my email. <laughs> <laughs> I have been working. Can you see that email? Yes. Yeah. So I I personally the Ionic team have been working endlessly for this, and it's just been launched like a few weeks now. Uh, and I've been using because before even they launched, I was using Ionic for desktop for a project because we loved Ionic. The tooling was so great. And now, what you can have is basically this. Uh, if we can go to the blog, you can have desktop desktop support. And mm, should I show you what I'm working on? I don't know if I should. Yeah, exactly. So this. Do you see that? This is it. Going from desktop to mobile. So now you have split pane, and they're, they've made a new grid. They're also doing so many other things that make it possible. So yes, split pane is certainly there. There are also other things that are on the timeline. They want to make Ionic basically be like the new bootstrap, so that you don't need to use bootstrap for web and Ionic for mobile. You can just use Ionic for everything. And that has actually yeah come now. It's a great question, actually. Next question, please. Yeah. And how difficult is it to uh, port an existing Angular 2 application, for example, to uh, Icon? Did I get? Do you hear that? Yeah, I, the question was how difficult is it to take an existing Angular 2 application and port it to Ionic? Okay. So if you have a, an existing I, uh, Angular 2 application, 100% of your TypeScript file, your code, that's the, not the template, is reusable because you don't, you're writing the same thing. Your actual core, your services, they're all reusable. So you, it's basically a very long night of copy pasting, maybe, you know, uh, but you don't need to write the same code in any. The only thing that will need change because you want to take advantage of Ionic, and Ionic is, is, is coupled with a lot of components and stuff. So you just need to like generate your own components and stuff. But the, so like at least an existing Angular 2 application, 60, 70% of everything you already have is reusable. The only thing that Angular 2 and Ionic don't have together is a route. Um, you know, the, the router is different because I, I, Ionic 2 is simpler. So in I, Angular 2, you don't need a router. But that's the thing. It's simpler, but you don't even need anything. All you just need to do is just delete your route specification and then just use your components. So all your components are just going to be reusable and everything. It's, it's more or less straight, pretty straightforward. 
Yeah, when it comes to the performance optimization, did it happen to you to optimize Ionic, the second one? Any strategies you've used? Did you hear that? So you, you said performance? Yeah. Yeah, basically strategies you had maybe to apply on existing Ionic applications maybe to, just, make, to just, make it more performant. Okay, yeah, examples. Yeah. All right. Um, what's it called? I, 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 one thing you need to understand is I know whenever you're creating a hybrid app, especially with things like Ion, people say, oh, they're not as performant as native apps. But let's just assume the, the performance standard is 60 frames per second, correct? Right? It's yeah. very easy to achieve, uh, to achieve 60 frames per second anywhere. But it's also very easy to get a very horrible Frankenstein, you know, I hate everybody application, you know? But with Ionic, of course, you know, when you're creating a native app, it's much easier to get performance because so much is hardware accelerated. But now in Ionic, uh, yes, so it's um, the, some of the tips is, you know, just write really good HTML. Don't try to, you know, put a div in a div in a div in a div in a, into 500 divs. I think somebody filed a bug when they say, oh, I tried to open a modal window, 50 models simultaneously, and the app broke. Then I think in the, somebody was like, well, you're not supposed to open 50 models. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. But you just have to be really conscious. Um, you have to really optimize your, your, be careful. And especially, another thing is, depends on what type of app you're building. Don't build the wrong type of app for Ionic. If your app needs a lot of, you know, hardware acceleration, you're trying to create a crazy game and everything, it's not worth using Ionic or any hybrid approach because that's not what they're, they're there for. But as time goes on, this is not the case. We've just heard of web assembly. So soon the web is going to be able to do everything. So there are so many things. Just make sure you you write really performant JavaScript code. Uh, don't create too many elements. Reuse as much as you can. Um, make 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 sure you're if you're using animations, use like uh, animations, um, web animations API. Don't try to use like CSS animations. I, I only use web animations API now, um, which is great. So just be careful. Don't don't bring and also you can take advantage of AOT ahead of time compilation. Uh, and Ionic are constantly working to actually improve this and this. I think the new version is coming out with Ionic three. Oh my god! If you test it, it's absolutely crazy. The startup times. And yeah, just if you follow the Angular best practices, you should be okay most of the time. Okay. Last question. Are there any plans to support the browser history or going backward to forward in the browser? So, yes, I, I think I heard that. Browser history, correct? Yeah, exactly. So, yes, um, I, I, I would like to think so. They actually, they technically already do. And I'll tell you how I know this. I was using Ionic for a web application project, which we've been working on for four months now, or five months, or six months. I can't really remember. But yeah, and. We had that same problem because right now it's everything is just indexed to HTML. But we were able to to use the Ionic deep linking API internally, and it actually really works really easily. There's also an open source uh, library that currently helps you do that. But Ionic themselves, so I've not asked that question, but I think yes, absolutely. If they're planning to support desktop, then of course I think sooner or later. Um, they will support browser history and such that when you click your black back button, it doesn't take you away from the app. It actually, you know, plays well. Uh, I, I, I can guarantee you can quote me on this. I can guarantee you that it's something that somebody somewhere is probably talking about uh, somewhere. So yes, I, I'd like to say yes, but if not, the community already has a solution for this. Okay, awesome. So thank you, Sunny. Really appreciated your. I think the audience liked it. OK, let me just. Uh, uh, let me get on this, the screen share. Hey, guys, it's me again. Oh my god, I, I had my hat on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to show you how rough my hair was. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much. It's been a great uh, pleasure having you guys. Uh, I know I, uh, at some point in the talk, I kind of got mixed up with the actual location. So apologies for that, <laughs> where you guys are actually situated. 
Oh, sorry about that. But yes, thank you very much. If you need anything about, you want to ask me any questions, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, I might not follow you, but because I look cool if I have more followers, apparently. <laughs> I'm joking. But feel free to ask me any questions anytime. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.